Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. We've got a lot of things to cover, so let's just jump right in. So just like the title and the thumbnail suggests, we're going to talk heavily about artificial intelligence and what's happening. And this is all taken from, uh, it was a Medium post, and it's by uh, Crypto Vortex. And I linked his information in the description below. And uh, if you're just looking for some, some really good uh, deep dives as far as like on X, and some pretty uh, newer plays in the altcoin market, this would be the person to follow. But uh, this piece that he, he came up with on Medium, we just talked about AI and just what was happening. And the last piece really got to me because I think we're all kind of sleeping on artificial intelligence right now. I mean, we know it's going to be big, but how big can it be, right? So if we take a look at it. This last couple of sentences pretty much put it all into perspective. It states that NVIDIA... Of course, one stock, massive company in the S&P 500, and it's pretty much leading everything else uh, getting into it. One stock is 83 times the size of all of X crypto AI, which has, a, and of course, NVIDIA has a market cap of 2.2 trillion. Let me say that again. NVIDIA, one stock, 83 times the size of all AI crypto. To further showcase the undervaluation, dog-themed meme coins, take your pick, are almost double the market cap of total AI coins. Why are we sleeping on it? Why are we just kind of ignoring it? It's just kind of interesting, but I think there's a reason why. It's because it's complex. We don't know really what's going on there. I think there's a lot of different crypto products that are putting AI behind its name, and they have nothing to do with AI, which is essentially what happened in the dot-com era. You just put dot-com next to your name, and of course, your stock went up, went to the roof. Anyhow, let's break into it. So. If we're taking a look at, of course, the crypto stocks, uh, uh, excuse me, crypto stocks, AI, crypto, we can see that in the last 24 hours, and we just had a nice little pullback, did we not? In the last 24 hours, we've had quite a run up and it wasn't Bitcoin and it wasn't L2s and it wasn't L1s. I mean, some did pretty well, but look at these AI plays, Render, BitTensor, Fetch AI, Singularity, Akash. I don't know what AIO is, Z network is, Ocean Protocol, Arkham. I mean, you're looking at 23%, 15%, 18%, 18.2, 15.4, and everything across the board. And this is just the actual AI cryptos that they're actually listing. Remember, on CoinGecko, there are a lot of crypto products that aren't necessarily categorized correctly. And that's where we need to really dig into it. So let's just talk about this post. So... He talks about what is crypto AI. It includes everything from developing AI models to executing AI-driven tasks in a secure, transparent manner. Industries such as healthcare, logistics, and finance will be disrupted and are the biggest in play. And of course, when we think about AI, the thing I, I always think about AI, of course, is, well, there's two things. First, I think about the Terminator and, of course, how it's going to destroy the world. And the second thing I think about is all the uh, adorable pictures that we actually make and we render the different videos. And that's pretty much my whole thinking of as far as AI because I never really di dived into it. But I want to bring you into my old profession, which was healthcare. Back in the good old days, I was a medic in the army. And when I hear about healthcare and about what's going on, I think it's just quite interesting and uh, what's happening. Let me. Uh, bring this up. Because we're talking about healthcare, I find this quite fascinating. There's a couple of things. This was a, a report about how AI is helping people uh, as far as diagnosis. 50 year, year old resident in Israel arrived at the Galilee Medical Center for a CT scan, complaining of a headache with uh, what, whatever other symptoms he has. The patient was sent home to rest Results typically, typically take one to two weeks, pretty standard. This time, however, an AI program scanned the data, alerted the doctors the outside chance the patient could be suffering from uh, IC bleeding, intracranial bleeding, needing immediate attention. AI program is known as Viz AI. I had never heard of this before. I'm like, that's interesting. They can plug in a bunch of data points and just, and then of course, AI can spit out what the potential diagnosis could be. It's already been uh, somewhat proven and actually is in practices, but they have a long way to go. Significantly save time, improve patient economic outcomes. Well, I like that, both of those sides. So the doctors immediately sent for the patient operated because it looked like he did potentially have this IC bleed. Patient's life was saved, credited the quick artificial diagnosis, shaved two weeks between the scan and treatment. Two weeks, two weeks, that guy would have been dead. Dr. Paz of the Ali Medical Center said, without it, patient would probably not have come to us or would have come to us too late and would have expired. 
and there's stuff like that. Another great story, uh, a young kid, four years old and under. He saw, and, and in the comment section, tell me if this isn't somebody you know or, you're, or is you yourself. I used to see this a lot. People would come in and they would say, I don't know what's wrong with me. I have these problems. I've been to multiple doctors and they cannot figure out. A boy saw 17 doctors over three years for chronic pain. And chat GPT figured it out in an afternoon. So this kid, there he is right there, Alex, 17 doctors. And the mom was like, I don't know why I keep getting these different diagnoses. So she, she put all his scans, all his lab reports, all his H&Ps, history and physicals and everything else in chat GPT and it spit out and said, hey, uh, Alex here could have a diagnosis of a tethered cord syndrome. So, and they went and did a CT scan after their 18th doctor and they found out that yes, that's exactly what it is. It's like a closed case of spina bifida if you've ever heard about that. And they discovered it, he had surgery and now he's recovering and he's on the road to amend. So like I, I see stuff like that, I'm like, this is great. And then there's another story that of course everybody loves uh, this is from some gentleman. Jeff, GPT saved my dog's life. Essentially the same thing. He's put in all the different uh, documentation and uh, lab results and it spit out that, the, that the, he, he could have had uh, anemia, low platelet count, which they knew. And it came out to uh, hemolysis, destruction of red blood cells and agglutination. Essentially saved the dog's life. So when we, talk, when we think about these things about AI, it's just something I don't really think about. I, again, I think about like the worst case, the world's ending or like some pictures. And of course, now we see stuff like this. I can get behind that. That makes sense. Now, the question is, how does this relate to crypto AI? Let's get to that right now. So crypto can lead to AI models, access to AI tech, individuals and small entities to access AI tools and services that were previously the domain of large corporations. And we actually talked about this with Minutes Network, which is a deep in play. It's not a, not, it's not a crypto AI, but it's the, same, it, it's the same philosophy. And this was, we talked about the deep in layer, and you may notice that right here, you've got a couple of big players, Akash, Kudos, Flux, Theta, Render, FX Land. This is the AI play also for the deep in layer. And what was interesting about this, if you think about these large, huge, massive companies, Google comes to mind, uh, Amazon comes, Amazon Web Service comes to mind. That kind of gets us out of it. But crypto and holding these tokens and actually doing some stuff like this could actually bring us in. What I'm talking about, of course, is this. What would you rather do as a big corporation? Would you rather say, okay, I, I want to, especially a startup, I want to build a massive, massive warehouse, Amazon, Google, and I want to put that in with massive amounts of NVIDIA H100s, $10,000 per, per processing or GPU. I want to pay people to service it. I want to pay for the electricity. I want to pay for the permits. I want to pay for the upkeep and everything else. And I'll make a lot of money. Good luck. Because, <laughs> I mean, you can do that if you're Google and Amazon, because that's what it is. Well, why don't you just do this if you're like an individual, like a startup, or like people who like us and say, hey, you know what? Why don't you just do this? Use my processor in my computer or in my graphics card and uh, I will allow you to use that for the computational power of, of artificial intelligence that needs a massive amount of this computation. Stuff like Akash, stuff like HyperCycle, stuff like Theta, Render, and then for file storage, you go, of course, you have Filecoin and Arweave. And uh, you just say, look, I don't have the time to actually build this stuff. I'm gonna give this to you. And, this, and we talk about this, the same in telecommunications, of course, you can build up these large towers for millions of dollars, but, or you can just say, hey, once you, uh, you know, have a node, and uh, we'll pay in tokens. But I digress from all this stuff. This is just, again, why it's not so much about the big, big players owning everything. It filters down to people like us who might be looking into the AI sector and uh, getting a part of that. So again, if we take a look at uh, the current landscape of crypto and AI integration, here's some of the bigger names like we just talked about, Render, Akash, Kudos, Nosana, BitTensor. I think that's the one of the bigger ones. I think it's like number two, as a matter of fact. And we can take a look, we can extrapolate this data and take a look at uh, the growth or the interest that's being put out there. This is from Google Trends. And it doesn't give you a precise monthly count of how much is actually as far as the, uh, the hits or the amount per all the different websites for artificial intelligence. But if you look over time, I, I go, it looks like we're going all the way back to 2019 or something like that. Now you can see that in the last year or so, this is when the highest amount of interest in AI has come. Now, the last month or so or two months, it's dropped down a little bit, but this is the time when AI is really popping off. 
And then just to put this into further perspective, AI tokens ranked as the second best performing category over the last three months. Now this may have changed because this data is from Dune Analytics as of January 2nd, 2024. We've got two months and of course, two months in the crypto sphere, especially in AI is an eternity. So L2s, uh, I don't know if they're doing that great. I think AI might have actually beat them, but I could be wrong, uh, correct me in the comments section. And then looking at this, top 15 countries leading interest in the AI crypto narrative in 2024. I found this interesting because one, when you look at this US, United Kingdom, Indian, Netherlands, Australia, Canada, Poland, what are what's one big country that you see that's missing on this one? It's China. Why isn't China into crypto? Well, the reason why China's not into crypto is because they're not in, or excuse me, China's not into AI. Why is China into AI? They are into AI, massively into AI. There is a race right now to create the best artificial intelligence to actually own that piece of the sector and dominate because that is essentially the next web that of course, you know, the countries that, that, that embrace that really led to a flourishing of, of empires, I guess, if you wanna say it. And the reason why they're not into crypto AI is because again, it gives it back to the people. They are more centralized. They are more of, we will control it. We do not like decentralization. Correct me in the comment section if you're from China. And if you're from China, let me know how you got, got around uh, uh, the uh, the provisions that don't allow you to to get into uh, YouTube and USA. But anyhow, again, crypto AI I think is for the smaller individuals like ourselves. So coins that fit the narrative, which is why you're here, right? Akash, and Akash is one that I actually own. Every actually everything that I'm talking about today, I mean, I'm either going to own or do own. So don't think this is just me being benevolent and just being so nice. It's just because I. I'm talking about my bags. So Akash, it's the Airbnb for server hosting. It allows users to lease computing resources from others with spare capacity. Again, just like the information that we took a look at here, why would we build this up when we can just pay somebody a token and use their GPUs, right? It allows users to lease computing resources from others with spare capacity. It offers almost 9,000 CPUs and 171 GPUs. Remember this number, 171 graphic processing units for Akash. Interesting. Uh, Akash network user increased rapidly in 2024. Looks to be that way. Also, there's one called Fetch. And Fetch, I believe, is like in number three or number four. It offers tools to build, deploy, and monetize AI service. It is the third largest AI coin with $3 billion in market cap. Now, I own a little bit of Fetch AI, but I sold Fetch AI. And one of the reasons why I did is because there was a great video. And it was by a guy from Coin Bureau. I don't have the resources that these that his organization does. They did a great video on Fetch AI, not on Filecoin AI. That's on their main channel. This is through their Coin Bureau Club. And if you watch this video, it makes you second guess yourself as far as like what Fetch AI is doing and the practices behind it. And that's really all I can say. You have to watch the video to make up a decision for yourself. A link in the description, you can check that out. A lot of great videos on what's happening in uh, all this space. And then yeah, third largest AI with 3 billion market cap. Makes you wonder how that works out. And again, if we're looking at uh, the crypto space, what really pushes the narrative? Well, it's speculation, it's hype, and it's greed. But here's the top five AI coins in terms of market cap. They've uh, significantly outperformed Bitcoin and ETH in 2023. Interesting. So again, Fetch AI crushed it. AGIX, Graph, Ocean, Tau, and Bitcoin and ETH, even though Bitcoin did really well, I mean, 153%, I mean, it's not like AGIX and Fetch, just saying. So taking a look at that, there was a couple there. Uh, we took a look at Fetch. We took a look at uh, Akash. Now let's take a look at a couple others. So this one is called Hypercycle AI. And I like this one because it's the same thing that we were just talking about. Again, I'm not a big, large corporation and I don't have the resources to build massive amount of warehouses and to, to store everything. And that's what Hypercycle essentially is doing, allow things to communicate back and forth and run nodes and, and increase that computational power to drive artificial intelligence because there's so much apparently demand. We'll get to that. I'm not 100% sure there is that much demand. I'll get to that. Next one is called, uh, I think I'm saying this right, Ether, Aether, 
I don't know for sure. But this one doesn't even have a token out yet. This is a very new one that I'll be at some point talking about on Dan Degen. This is like the risky plays. But they've got a lot of good backers. Uh, Sanctor, Maelstrom, UB Capital, Gate.io, Bybit, Game Gishing, Game Gishing, Game Publishing, Gaming Cloud, and AI. And of course, it's all about sticking those GPUs into a, into a warehouse at somewhere, shape, or form, and allowing people to use those GPUs. And I think one thing that was interesting about it is that it's got a pretty big backer as well as like Arthur Hayes. So if you know uh, from BitMEX, uh, that would be one of them. So that looks like a pretty good project. Again, I'll get deep into it. But for all these projects, there's going to be something that is not going to look right. There's going to be something that you're going to say, that doesn't really match up. And that's why I like to do a lot of research on, on X. This was from Crypto Astrologist. And just yesterday, or actually 21 hours ago, he says, hey, Aether, I think I'm saying that right, has the same bad smell as Satoshi VM. Impossible Finance's research report, and list the blog right here, on Ether is super misleading. Out of 41,000 GPUs, 31,280 are rock chip. RK3588s. RK3588s aren't even GPUs, they're SOCs. They're just smaller versions. And he lays it out. He's like, look, good Lord. All right, I gotta get out of here. I hate when that happens. He says, uh, da, 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 da. rock chips, that's 31,000. The NVIDIA, Tesla T40440, and all these different, all these are gra they're, they're CPUs, GPUs, and this is essentially the computational power. So total, it's 41,888. But they say it's it's very misleading because the rock chips are so many, but they're the smaller versions, which I have to give them credit for. That's very true. In a table where they compare Aether to the competitors, they use this number to show the number of GPUs, but over 75% of them are, like I said, not GPUs, they're SOCs. So they lay it out. Aether, Akash, Render, against, I don't know what that is. IO.net, which we'll get to that in a second. So the number of GPUs, it says 40,000, but like you said, like Crypto Rochal just said, he's like, look, there's not that, there's, that's not all of them. 40,000 compared to like Akash's 150, that doesn't make any sense. Compared to render, that's a 10X of what they actually have. How'd they do that? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, if you take a look at all this data, you really have to break it down by T-flops and A100s. <laughs> First of all, what the heck's a T-flop and what's an A100? It's a great question. So first of all, the A100s are the $10,000 $10, NVIDIA chip that everybody's after. And I think there's like a six month waiting period. So again, powering many of these applications is a roughly 10,000 chip that's become one of the most critical tools in the artificial intelligence industry, the NVIDIA A100. And the teraflop, what the heck is that? I didn't know what that was either. So what are teraflops? It's a processor's capability to calculate one trillion floating point operations per second. So higher the number, the more the more the uh, calculations. So that just makes sense, right? Let's just keep it as that as simple as we possibly can. So again, let's take a look at this. The number of A100s, those super expensive NVIDIA chips, $10,000, eh, they still have 4,000. That's a lot. Akash has 93. Render looks like it has zero, but it's not their thing, right? It's not. It's not like they're having this 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 massive amount there for you know rendering smaller projects. And then IO.net is four hundred sixty, which is pretty good. And the teraflops, if we take a look at this. Hey, one hundred sixty nine thousand compared to three thousand, or almost four thousand for Akash, to eighty five thousand, which is essentially half of what Render. But look at IO.net, four hundred eighty three thousand tera. That's a lot apparently. And here's the cost though, 33 cents, buck 10, 40 cents, 76, 89 cents. So you got, you've always got trade-offs and that's the great thing right there. So 33 cents is pretty good. I, I think so. Scalability enterprise. So taking a look at that, that's the data that we actually have, which would make Ether, Ether, how do you say it? Look like a pretty decent project. Again, we'll see how it all works out. I'm not for sure. So on top of that, there's also Theta. Now, Theta is a project that I've been holding or I've had been buying since 2020 and 2021. Now I took some profits along the way, but Theta has pivoted a little bit. Theta, when I was into it, when I remember, it was Theta and Theta TV. They use the edge clouds. You could actually store the uh, video files 
along everybody's different computers and they can kind of bring them together to make the actual uh, video file instead of like Google having all these massive uh, storage facilities where they would store all the video files. And then of course, if people use them and would, they would kick them out just like what it, it is with YouTube right now, essentially what you're watching. They just did it in a decentralized way, but now they is doing this. Its mission is to provide developers, researchers, enterprises, large and small, with unlimited access to GPU processing power for any AI or video task at the most optimal cost. Edge Cloud Phase One is estimated to launch on May 1st, 2024. So they got a little wise. Theta Edge Network launched in 2021 with Mainnet 3.0 focused on GPU intensive video processing required for encoding, transcoding, distribution. That's what I remember. Today, Theta's global network of nearly 10,000 Edge nodes run by community members comprise one of the largest clusters of distributed GPU computing power in the world, very decentralized. And then it breaks down like, here's the GPUs, the large, the medium, and the smalls. All you gotta know is this, total approximately 77,000 T-flops. There's a, there's a word you're never gonna forget. So again, if we take a look at T-flops, 77,000, it's pretty good. It's uh, right in line with render and uh, apparently more than a cache, but again, they're more for storage. And uh, and TFLOPs is roughly half of what uh, Aether has. But look at this, io.net, 483,000 TFLOPs. What's this? I hadn't even heard about this until I read this article. Here's io.net. They put out a, a piece that says GPU's demand is escalating 2x every three months. Now, that may be true. But if you go to their site and you sign up like I did, you can see, and this is real time, these are all the different GPUs that they have available. And look at this, 20 cents an hour, 36 cents an hour, 20. You see how much is busy? Now I could be interpreting this data wrong and I would love to have these guys on. It looks like a reasonable project, but I can just tell you there's not too much space being, well, there's one here. That's good, 100% busy, awesome. And down we go and down we go and down we go. Which makes me wonder, I'm like, if it's so cheap, and I like this, it's got io.net, 44,000 GPUs, render, almost 5,000, and Filecoin, 1,000. Nice little uh, spacer. Uh, it makes me wonder just how big this could be. I mean, are we that early? Maybe we are. And uh, just so you know, because I was, the first thing I was saying, I was like, well, where's the token? Io coin is the native cryptocurrency and protocol token of io.net. Io coin is launching Q2 2024, stay tuned. So. Uh, nothing's out right now, and that's what we have. And uh, all these things that we talked about, I just, or I linked those in the description so you can do some more research for yourself. And I will probably be investing into them a little bit, but who knows? And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.